Welcome to the Weather Insights Tropical Briefing. This is Thursday, September 19th. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney along with meteorologist Jeff Linder. National Hurricane Center still tracking three systems. Starting from the far right, we have uh, disturbance number one with a 30% chance now in development. I, I believe that is still the remnants, yeah, remnants of Gordon on that one kind of close together. So I wanted to make sure. Then we have this one that popped up left of Gordon disturbance number two with a 20% chance of develop, development over the next seven days. And then the one that we're most interested in, because this could potentially affect the United States coastline, the Gulf Coast states. Next week, we have disturbance number three. This is uh, now a 40% chance of development over the next seven days. And Jeff, um, this one is, is going to be a forecast mess for right now, uh, simply, I think the main reason, because it's not a closed low, but the models are struggling with th this one as expected, and it really doesn't look like much in the Western Caribbean there, getting a little bit of uh, convection over Honduras, uh, Nicaragua there on the coastline, um, but nothing in terms of circulation, but a little bit more convection this afternoon, really the uh, large area convection when we're talking about the Central American gyra is the uh, convection there in the Eastern Pacific. And uh, as far as the rest of it goes, the, the intertropical convergence zone, I've got a little wave coming off of the uh, West Coast of Africa, but pretty much looking like yesterday. So um, what are your thoughts on this on this system there in the Western Caribbean? Yeah, I think this is kind of like what we've been talking about. It's going to be slow to come together. These Central American gyres that are that are typical down here in June and then later in the season, late September, especially in October, uh, is, is going to encompass this whole area. So from central southern Mexico across the Yucatan and then down into Central America, you're going to get a trough in here. And you're going to have a really broad circulation. And this little tropical system developing here south of Mexico is really not part of that yet. But as this develops this weekend, and you're going to have these little spokes of energy that rotate around it, and if those spokes of energy find a favorable location and conditions, that's when they can attempt to try and to develop in some sort of tropical system. And so the current idea and modeling is suggesting some spoke of energy comes up here from the, from the eastern Caribbean or from the eastern Pacific, and we get a little bit of a westerly wind here that uh, meets up with the easterly trade winds in the Caribbean. And so you get just natural background spin here in the Western Caribbean as you get into uh, early next week. And, and that will likely attempt to form some sort of low pressure. But there's a lot of spread in where this happens. And again, like I said, this is very slow to happen. It's very, it's usually a very messy evolution. You usually have a real big, broad uh, area of low pressure that can have center reformations and stuff like that. We saw this exact same thing back in June with Tropical Storm Alberto um, yep. that then rotated westward kind of around the, the Central America trough here. Mm -hmm. And so this is the best thing to do at this time frame is again to look at the ensemble approach of the major models and, and the deterministic models, they're out there Every single run of these deterministic models is showing death and destruction to the U.S. Gulf Coast. I mean, I'll just put it out there. If you want to go look right. at it, go look at it. But yeah. there's significant changes in every run of these models. The GFS has been bouncing all over the place. The European is generally weaker and kind of buried down in the Bay of Campeche. Um, the Canadian's been shifting all over the place. And so that's what we try to shy away from, those deterministic model runs at this range and look more at the ensembles because you get a lot more um, potential ideas of, of, of the, not only the spread, but where centers and where storms can form here. And so this is, all these ensembles are for next Thursday, September 26th, around lunchtime, around noon. This is the European. And, and the first thing you're gonna see is they're spread all over the place. So we could have low pressure from south of Cuba to east of the Yucatan, to south of Louisiana, to down uh, off the eastern Mexican coast. And so this is just the European. Um, but the point is, there's a signal here, right? There's, there's probably going to be something going on down here around the Yucatan as we get in the middle of next week. This is the GFS, a little bit more concentrated here, yeah. uh, possibly in the Yucatan channel. And it has a few members that are faster, quicker, that are already into the state of Florida and heading on and off toward the Northeast. 
um, some a few members here, kind of southeast of the southeast part of Louisiana. So you can the first thing to notice here is this is a little bit more eastern weighted. So there's more members here that are that are heading up toward the northeast Gulf, Florida, um, and very few members over here in the southern Gulf of Mexico or Bay of Campeche. And so that's somewhat of a difference that we're seeing between the European ensembles and the GFS and the GFS ensembles right now. Um, which one's right? No clue. Um, both of them could certainly be on the right page here. Again, it just kind of determined depends on where exactly that low pressure tries to form. And then lastly, looking at the Canadian ensembles, interestingly enough, a pretty good signal here in the South Central Gulf of Mexico. Yeah. That's almost a, a blend of both the GFS and the right. European. You know, it's okay. not not too different. Um <laughs> But a couple stronger members and a lot faster coming up here towards the Florida pain handle. So I would say there's there's a signal here. There's some agreement, but there's there's a lot of spread and what or where something may happen. Yeah. And what's interesting, too, is, is with each uh, ensemble modeling, if you take a look at synoptically what's happening, above it, the, the different positions of that trough, too. So uh, we, you know, we've got a potential front moving through next week. And so those synoptic um, patterns will, will certainly come into play, but uh, just too early to tell. So we'll have yeah. to see, see how that plays out. Um, and this yeah. is a typical late September, early October pattern. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can have storms down here in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico, the Bay of Campeche, and you can have a trough come down and it can yank these things back to the northeast. So even buried way down here to the south, these storms can get yanked back to the north or northeast, uh, depending on the depth of the trough that comes across the central U.S. or the eastern U.S. One thing I think we've seen a little bit in the trending over the last 24, 36 hours is a little bit more of a western trend in the ensemble. So more central Gulf of Mexico, less eastern Gulf. That doesn't necessarily mean it doesn't end up in the eastern Gulf or the northeastern Gulf. It gets a little bit further west, potentially, before it maybe turns back to the north our northeast and so you know i wouldn't say that there's any part of the gulf coast that's out of the woods here i think texas and the the eastern coast of mexico are probably on the lower end of the spectrum of of any likely impacts but louisiana on eastward over towards florida uh that's a very climatog climatological favored track for this time of year and uh it, and i'd be paying attention you know really anywhere in the gulf coast but especially louisiana eastward i'd be really paying attention to this because if it can get going, A, it looks like it's going to be pretty large uh, size-wise, and then B, it uh, if the conditions look favorable, it could it could potentially strengthen quite a bit. So never sleep on late September, early October tropical systems in the Gulf of Mexico. They can be nasty. Yeah. The only thing consistent with these three models is that they all are showing a low in the Gulf next week. Uh, direction and intensity are the wild cards right now, and we'll have a better idea if this thing actually forms a, a closed low. So you're going to see some crazy things online. Uh, some of these deterministic uh, things like Jeff was talking about, don't pay attention to them. Stick with a trusted source. Uh, you can keep it right with us here on Weather Insights. Where we will have updates, uh, more updates and briefings this weekend. And you can uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you turn on the notifications to do so. Jeff, Thank you very much. Good stuff as always, sir.